Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Max Gloom vs. the High Bay LED Light. This is episode 18. And today in this video we're going to talk about the similarities between these plants, uh, pollination, and also pruning from the last episodes. And I'll talk a little bit about the spectrum as well as I mentioned in the last episode. So the first thing, if you just take a look at these plants, um, it's kind of hard to tell as they've gotten bigger now and, and everything's kind of grown kind of weird. But as I've been watching these grow, they've been kind of like a mirror image of each other. And kind of the most easiest thing to notice here is like just these two branches right here, kind of facing right in towards the middle. And it, it's not just those two, but a lot of other uh, similarities uh, like that have been kind of displaying themselves as they've been growing. But uh, it's kind of hard to see now with the, the extra foliage and everything. Uh, but you know, even just looking at the stems, the way that they're shaped kind of here, uh, they're basically just a mirror image of each other. And like I said, these are clones. Um, now, as far as episode 16 goes, uh, I, I had showed the plants, and then after the episode was over, I actually pruned them. I didn't record that. In episode 17, you saw that they were pruned. Uh, I didn't show a comparison. I don't really have any good footage to show the comparison, but there will be a time lapse at the end of this video series showing that. Uh, but what I can say is that when I prune these out, let's see here, I prune these out node for node. So whatever I cut off in one, I did to the other exactly the same. Anyways, as far as pollinating goes, uh, it's very, very simple from what I do. What I'll do is I'll just, I'll take one of these flowering stems and just kind of go like this, tap it. Or what I can do is just kind of go down to the stem of the plant and then just tap the whole thing, just to give it some abrupt taps. And that's enough to pollinate the flowers. They're self-pollinating. You don't have to go from one flower to another to do it. They are male and female in each flower. Not the same as like a watermelon vine where you have to have a male flower that pollinates a female flower. Uh, these are very easy to do. So it doesn't require any extra effort. I already have fruit set going on. Uh, so as far as the spectrum goes, I mentioned in the last episode I was going to talk about the spectrum. So when you give a plant additional red light, kind of like the Max Bloom here, you see how I have this, this is the Bloom switch just turns on those two center cobs or their pure red light. So if you give a plant additional red lighting, um, and it really depends on the ratio and the plant and everything, but generally more red light is going to equate to uh, more flowers. But on these tomato plants here, I don't really think we're going to see that because just the way that they grow flowers isn't quite the same as something like a pepper plant. Um, and something like a pepper plant, you can see like hundreds of flowers being produced at uh, various different places in the plant. This kind of grows, uh, tomato plants grow like, especially these cherry tomatoes, they grow these stems. And on those stems, you're not going to see any additional flowers on those stems. It's just going to be pretty much the same for both plants. So what we're really interested in here is more or less just looking at the production at the end. Um, if I talk about like medicinal plants, that's going to be different though, because in a medicinal plant, and you know what I'm talking about, a medicinal plant grows flowers. You don't pick fruit from a medicinal plant. It grows flowers and that's what you use. And the, it's actually the most, one of the more ancient types of flowers, if you think about it. The, the flower, the plant is basically a dinosaur. It's one of the original types of flowers before there was actually flowers like you see on these tomato plants. Um, so additional red lighting is going to produce more flowering on a plant like that. That's kind of the point of this light. This is what it's made for, is it's made for medicinal plants for the most part. But for people who want to buy lights like this, that don't grow medicinal plants, and they just want to do stuff that's home growing stuff and um, indoor growing, um, what we're really looking at is here is see if it makes any difference between that and a white light. Now, I don't really care what light performs better. Honestly, these lights here are just, this experiment is all about just uh, comparing these two lights just because they are about the same price and using about the same wattage. And uh, one is diffused light, one is projected light with lenses. So we're just kind of looking at the comparison between them. It's just to kind of see what happens. I don't really um, hope that one does better than the other. I'm just curious to see what's going to happen. Now, if this light works better, then I would obviously say, yeah, this, this is okay light to buy. If this light works better, then I would buy this one. Um, I'm not favoring one or the other. So back in the old days when you had HID lighting, 
uh, to grow medicinal plants, you would have metal halide for the vegetative stage, then you would switch over to HPS, high pressure sodium, because it has additional red lighting, orange lighting and everything in there that causes it to produce more flowering and more weight. Um, as the overall end product is the yield. These days with LED technology, uh, things are a little bit different. And in a lot of cases, you don't even need to switch spectrums. Of course, that's what this light does. Uh, if it's tuned properly, you can just use it through the entire grow. If you were to use HPS during the entire grow, high pressure sodium, you would get a lot of reaching. Uh, it depends on how you control it, but like say a beginner, if your light's too far away, you're definitely gonna get a lot of reaching and stretching. It's gonna get lanky, it's gonna fall over, um, you have to tie stuff up, and it's gonna stress the plant out. With LED technology like this, with white light and everything, and, and a very well-tuned spectrum light like the Max Bloom is here, um, you're not gonna see that. As a matter of fact, you can see here, even with the red lights turned on, this is still not, it, it's still not elongating, and the node spacing is still staying small. We're not seeing any stretching uh, or lankiness in it whatsoever. One thing I did do is I did add um, an iron supplement to the uh, solution down here in the bin. And that's because I was seeing a little bit of iron deficiency in these leaves. So as you can see right now on these leaves, there's a little bit of yellowness to them. Uh, this was actually worse before, but since I added the iron in there, it's actually started improving. And I originally thought it was maybe getting light burn, but it really shouldn't be getting light burn with only around 700 micromole. That's really not that much. So I added iron to it and it seems like it's improved quite a bit, uh, starting to green up a little bit better. And that's the other thing I wanted to mention in this video is that under a white light, you can see coloration in its natural form. You can see deficiencies that would happen to where over here, you can't see anything. You can't see how well your, well your plant is doing unless, of course, you turn this light off and then turn a white light on and then take a look at it. So, you know, it's not a big deal. I mean, you could have an additional light in your growth tent if you want just for visualizing it, or you can wear the sunglasses that would block out the red spectrum so you can see it in more natural color. Um, but that is something to note. If you have a white light, you can just see things easier. And then it's just, you don't have to do anything extra. It's there and it works. So, also, uh, in addition to what I talked about in this video as far as spectrum goes, uh, Shane over at MyGrow on his channel has a few very good videos that talk about spectrum, how it affects yield and growth, um, and also efficiency as far as light output versus wattage consumed. So I'm gonna link those videos below in the description. You can go over his channel and watch it uh, if you're interested. Uh, a lot of good information there. So anyways, I think that is it for this episode. Um, not sure what I'm gonna do for episode 19, but we'll see you there. And thanks for watching.